Good morning. This is Sarah Satch with Posh Pooch Designs, and this is our live video chat. And just in case you don't know, we do our live video chat over on the Facebook page, Posh Pooch Designs. And we try to do one every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Melissa. Don't forget to clink in. Now, I've got my Thomas Kincaid mug today. I was going through my mugs. I still cannot find my Posh Pooch Designs mug. I am going to find it one of these days when I stop looking, probably. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, and I hope that more people will join us because this is a wonderful time to get out some information as well as have fun. Good morning, Susie. So glad you're here. Don't forget to clink in. Now, I have a few questions today that I need to answer, and I'm going to start with a question that I got. Oh, it's, oh I get this question several times um, about my YouTube channel. And so let me just clarify um, the question. One of the questions that I received this week is why are my older videos a different angle or completely different than my new ones? And um, those of you who have been following me very long, I'm sorry if I keep glancing down, I'm checking all the, um, the um, comments. <laughs> so I keep glancing over to look at the comments. But anyway, when I first started doing my YouTube channel about a year and a half ago, my goal wasn't to do tutorials. It was just to make some accompanying videos to go with some of my written patterns. And so I would take a written pattern and I would show you a few stitches and talk about it. But I found out that that isn't what people were looking for. And so then I tried to change it up and bring the camera down to show my hands. Well, I was trying to help both left-handed and right-handed crocheters, and so that wasn't acceptable either. And I'll have to be honest with you, I was a little shocked with the negativity. And I thought, wow, that's free. How could you be so negative about something that is free? But I wasn't deterred because I love yarn and I love crochet and I wanted to share with the world <laughs> my, my love of crochet and yarn. And so good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Jen. So glad you're here. So anyway, a few months ago, my husband and I decided to uh, use some of my savings and we picked up some new equipment. And part of that was the ability to turn the camera and show the opposite angle. And so you'll find that my newer patterns, the angle is the other direction. And so, um, because my goal now, you know, when I first began, it was to make videos to accompany my already written patterns. And then I was trying to make more uh, videos to go along with that. And so now I do, I try to do kind of a combination of that. I try, I want, because, I want you to understand that writ learning to read a written pattern can help you so much. You don't have to be a master at it, but it will help you in understanding how to crochet. And it will open up a world of a lot more patterns out there. You see, I view YouTube channels that do crochet as a help, but not the end of all means. In other words, it's a good idea to have a working knowledge of crochet patterns crochet diagrams, uh, pictures, photo tutorials, and YouTube, and combine all those things together to help you be a more well-rounded crocheter. So I'm. Uh, someone said to me, don't change. I'm like, I'm not gonna change. I'm still me, I'm still silly. I'm not perfect, I do the best I can. And I love what I do, and I just wanna share it with you all. And I'm so thankful that you came and watched this video today. Now, let's get to our conversation just as soon as everybody else clinks in. Like I said, I've got my Thomas Kincaid mug today. It's another one of the things that I really, really love is I love the Thomas Kincaid paintings and prints and things like that. And actually, um, a couple of months ago, I was able to find a Thomas Kincaid clock at Goodwill. I was so excited to find it. Of course, I had to put some batteries in it, <laughs> but it was fun. 
All right, so let's get to our conversation. I'm going to switch my camera down and show you a display. And on this display, you're going to see three different crochets that I've done. This is a chunky yarn. I tried to do it big so that you could see. And what you're seeing here is here the chain is stitched extremely tight and it causes the top to fan out. Here the chain is down here and it's stitched extremely loose. And so the top of it is the bottom of it is fanned out and the top is scrunched up. And this is the way you want your work to look. You want to have an even chain with even rows. Now all three of these are where I chained and then I have uh, I think 10 or 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes. We have 10 double crochet stitches. So if I'm stitching and I see that my chain is too tight, then there is a couple of things that you can do to fix that. If the pattern calls for, say, a J hook, and you see that your chain is too tight, you can switch and use an I hook or even an H to go down just a little bit. I'm sorry, I told you the wrong direction. If your chain is too tight, you want to go up. So after your J would be your K hook. Sorry, I said that backwards. Because you want to loosen up this chain a little bit. Or you can just loosen up your tension. Um, one thing I have noticed that a lot of people will stitch so tight that they get that line around their finger and that's not good. That means you're, you're pulling your, your tension too tightly. So if your chain is too tight, the top of your work is going to fan out. Now let's look at this one. This one, the bottom is chained right here and it's chained really, really loosely. And then the top of your work is going in. This is the one where you're going to want to go down a hook size and if you're using a J hook you might want to use an I or even an H so that you can get your tension even. Because if you do something where you want to hook it together at the end and your chain is too big or too tight it's not going to fit. Okay and, and this one is where the gauge or the tension is right. Now everybody stitches different. Everybody has a different tension or gauge. And the best way to do this is if you pay attention when you're first beginning. And when and if you notice that it is doing that, loosen up your tension or switch to a bigger or smaller crochet hook. And that's just for the beginning chain, not your entire project, just when you're doing that beginning chain. Because it looks like if you, let's look back over there for just a second. If you see here, it looks like the tension here and here isn't wrong. It's just that this chain's too loose and this one's too tight. And all, you're, all you really need to do is to uh, switch your hook, smaller or bigger, only on the beginning chain. And then stitch the rest of your project or a couple of rows of it so that you can see if your stitching is going to be even. You know, if you're making a cowl and it has you stitch the whole thing and then you're going to join your ends and your one end is too small or too big, they're not going to meet up. And so you want to make sure that it is going to meet up. So just to reiterate, if your chain at the beginning is too short or too tight, switch to a bigger hook just for the starting chain. If your chain is too big, switch to a smaller hook just for the beginning chain and then stitch a row or two and check. Um, and it's also a good idea to practice if you see that that chain that uh, is too tight or too big to practice the tension of it because you want to have your tension even. All right, let's go back to that top cam again. Like I said, this one is your beginning chain is too tight. This one, your beginning chain is too loose. And this one is perfect. Okay, we don't want it to be too big. Go down a hook size. We don't want it to be too tight. 
go up a hook size just for that beginning chain. Not your whole project, just that beginning chain. Because even if you're making a blanket and you have this whole thing that you're making and then the bottom pops in or flares out, you go to put a trim on that and it can be very difficult to get it to lay straight. And you cannot fix this with blocking. And blocking is where you dampen the item that you're making and you lay it out flat. If it is small, you can pin it to a board. And if it's large, you lay it out flat. Something that I do with blankets is I'll put it in the washing machine for a quick, what I call, it's just a water rinse. There's no soap, there's no vinegar or anything in it. And then I lay it out flat on my deck to dry in the sun. And if those corners come in or something, I might pin them. But if your beginning chain is too tight, it's not going to work because it's gonna pull in. And if it's too loose, it's gonna be flared out. And although it seems like something very simple, it's very important depending on what project that you're making. Okay, does anybody have any questions on that? Did I explain that in a way you can understand it? All right, now something I wanted to share with you also um, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post those. And if you, uh, even or, um, any questions about what we just talked about, go ahead and post those and I'll try to answer those questions for you. Now, something that I wanted to share with you, uh, we started our uh, new way of doing our videos and through the holidays, I'm, I've got you know new stuff and things that I'm sharing with you. But the first of the year, I'm going to be starting some new things. We're still going to have our weekly live video, but we're also going to have, hopefully, either a weekly or twice a month class. And it's going to be called Back to the Crochet Basics. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to combine learning to crochet and learning to understand written patterns somewhat, learning the abbreviations, along with learning to crochet. And I'm going to go all the way back to the very basics of crochet. I have 12, I think, lessons already written out. And if it continues to be great, I'll make even more lessons. But it's just something that I've been wanting to do. A lot of people have asked me if I would do that. And so I am going to be doing that. It'll be on the YouTube channel. And it'll start after the first of the year, um, back to the crochet basics. So that's something fun that we're going to be doing. And I hope that you all be a part of that. You know, sometimes um, I've been crocheting for so many years that I forget things that I take for granted that I already know. And I forget that maybe you, you maybe have not learned that particular skill or technique. So it might be kind of fun. So hi, Petra. I'll see if I missed anybody. Oh, there's Lynn. Lynn is my sister-in-law. She's my husband's sister. Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Everybody remember to clink in. All right, so let's talk about what's new this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Now, yesterday, I know you were doing a series on vintage crochet patterns with a modern twist. And so yesterday, I got the video for the new stocking done. It's a basic granny square stocking, but I changed the granny square to give it a new twist and so that video is yesterday it's a written pattern it's a photo tutorial and a video for you okay so the next thing we're going to do for our vintage with american american <laughs> with a modern twist is my uh, crochet angels and this is a granny square angel she's got wings She's very simple to do, and this is one we're going to do probably the first of next week. And it's it's in our the third one in our series of vintage patterns with a modern twist. And her modern twist is that she's made out of sparkle yarn. And here's a white one that I did with blue. There we go. And the uh, something really, really neat. Remember last week I talked about the sparkle yarns that are best for Christmas. And one of you, I can't remember, told me to go check out the Karen Simply Soft and Party. Guess what? I got some. Is that not gorgeous? Let me put that up close to you. This is a silver sparkle yarn, and it has different color sparkles in it. And I am going to do the video for the angels in this sparkle yarn. Ah, I just love this new yarn. 
Thank you for telling me about it. So now I have three favorites for Sparkle Yarns for Christmas. We have the I Love This Yarn in Sparkle. I forgot the other one. <laughs> Let me take a look over there. Let me see if I can remember. Well, I think it was the Red Heart with Love, right? With the Sparkle. I can't remember. That's sitting over there and I can't see the label. It is one of my favorites, though. And then, of course, this one is number three on my favorites list. All right, so we did that one. And then um, we did the Easy Does It Washcloth last week. And I got a note that said, because this has a circle in the center. Let me show you this one. It has a circle in the center. And I got a note. She said, I am going to use the new Red Heart Scrubby yarn, and I'm going to make it just in that circle and then the rest of it. So then I'll have a scrubby in the middle and a washcloth. I thought, what a great idea. I'm going to have to try that. I hope she'll send me a picture when she gets it done. I really want to see that. Okay, and then another one we're doing is one of our remakes, and this is the stocking, the stocking, this is a slipper. And this one's pretty worn out because I've been wearing them around the house. And I decided to go ahead and do it in four sizes, so you can make it just a little bit smaller. And this is the video, we're gonna do a remake on it, and it should be ready probably Friday, I haven't finished editing that one yet. Okay, and so that's a slipper pattern that we're going to do. Now, can you see this belt behind me? Let me put it on the roaming cam so you can see it up closer. This is a really simple single crochet belt that I'm going to do. And it's done with two uh, D-rings. Um, let's see if I can grab that package up there. Let me show you. And cotton yarn. Let me go to the computer. This is D-rings. You use two D-rings, cotton yarn, and it's all stitched in single crochet. Super easy, super inexpensive to make, and you can make them for every outfit that you've got. And because if you make them out of cotton, they don't stretch as much, and they'll even hold up your jeans. So that's a pattern we're going to be doing this week also. Just a fun little video. It's, it's a real short video. So um, that's a lot, isn't it? And of course, it's the time of year when we're doing lots of fun stuff. And so... That's all the information I have for you this week, but I want to tell you about next week. We're going to have a virtual Halloween party. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do next week, don't miss out 930 Mountain Time on the Posh Pooch Designs Facebook page. I'm going to be in costume. I'm going to tell you about a holiday drink. I'm going to tell you about a holiday snack. I'm going to tell you about a holiday craft and holidays I should say Halloween with dogs so we'll have five things we're gonna talk about and it'll be lots of fun so I hope you'll come and visit with me next Tuesday at 9 30 a.m. on the Facebook page Mountain Time well thanks everyone for coming today I hope you uh, understood about the importance of making sure that your chain your beginning chain on your project is right because it can mess up your whole project if it's not and oh what if you wasted all that time making something beautiful and your chain just wasn't right so that's why that is very important I'm gonna let you go thank you for visiting with me today I'm so glad hi Trish I just saw you pop in clink in thanks for visiting with me today and have a wonderful wonderful week.